And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? Oh, come off it, friend. You know full well why we're here. The time has come for you to return to Etheris and help your brethren prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way. But I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Huh? But what about the final days? The death and the doom? Oh, we have to hurry before it's too late! Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. Be at ease. They bear you no grudge, nor do I. How could we, having come to understand your purpose? For millennia, you and yours work tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessel's construction. An arduous feat by any measure. It is clear you have spared no effort. Why, your very names are a testament to your dedication. Names are an expression of the self, a declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. might be needed. All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us. Don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here where we can keep them safe. With what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men and your own kin besides. Singing way. Thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Etheris are beyond counting, and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits, to venture unto the highest mountains and the deep... And thou, my friend, I... Oh. Roy! <laughs> Pudding Way? Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure but one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. A judicious application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. 
<clears throat> and living way. <laughs> Tis no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. T'would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of Etheris. Made in haste, though I assure thee, the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it should You're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. I shall remain with the Lopper. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home. Which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, and I pray deeply that it won't, I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. Thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind. In the most gracious of guests. Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from Aetherius, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and Circle 
Getting back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlian Forum, yes? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say, we have kept Alphano and the others waiting long enough.
I thank you all for gathering here on such short... This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian. Nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens. And so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talofaroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands in search of a route to access the ethereal sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. 
What those researchers discovered in the hinterlands was not a passage unto the ethereal sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life, and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built much like Nuncref's hope in ages past. It will bear the people. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions, and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. remember what Mother told us when we visited home. That it wasn't until after we were born that Father seemed to lose himself in his work. If that great work of his was the evacuation of this star, then... Yes. It wasn't for his benefit. Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. I may look daggers at him, but I will neither speak nor draw them. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well.
So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people, many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end, but what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action, and there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. 